Okay, second short little video. This goes right along with your first PowerPoint video. What I'm offering here is just a practice problem for you to go through and work on before you actually start your worksheet. Thought this would be helpful to maybe get some practice and answer or ask any questions you need to ask of me before you actually start your worksheet. So in this particular problem, we have, again, we're dealing with Mendel's pea plants and Mendel's experiments. He found that green was dominant over yellow in pod color. That was the same as our previous problem I already worked. Yellow is dominant over green in the pea color. This time you're going to do a Punnett square for a cross between a plant that is heterozygous for both green pods and yellow peas. Again, remember, heterozygous means that you have one dominant allele, one recessive allele, one dominant letter, one lowercase letter. And it is heterozygous for both traits. The second plant is heterozygous for green pods and has green peas. Okay, again, remember, Heterozygous means one dominant allele, one recessive allele for its green pods. And it has green peas. The green peas, again, are the recessive pea color. And then work through your Punnett square and determine the probability for all possible genotypes. So on a scrap piece of paper, you're going to need to stop this video for a few minutes, work through, try to work this problem out. And then come back once you have completed it and then go and restart the PowerPoint here. And on the next slide, it'll be showing and I will be explaining how to have worked out this Punnett squares and make your predictions. So again, stop the video, work the Punnett square, and then we'll move on. Okay, you're back. Hopefully you took time to stop it and work this out. But let's begin. Again, we'll walk through all the steps. So step one again, we have to have some letters representing our alleles. Again, we were dealing with green and yellow pods, yellow and green peas, with the green being dominant in pod color and the yellow being dominant in the pea color. So we have big G, little g for pods, big Y, little y for peas. Very similar to what I did in the previous problem. Step two, I told you plant one was heterozygous for both traits. So we're going to do pod color first, so we're going to have a big G, little g. Again, heterozygous means one dominant allele, one recessive allele. That first plant was also heterozygous for its pea color. So we're going to have a big Y and a little y. Now I told you in the problem, it was heterozygous for green pods and it had green peas. Well, heterozygous, again, one dominant allele, one recessive allele. The dominant trait shows up, so a big G, little g. Again, green peas are recessive. The only way to, for a recessive trait to show up is to have two recessive genes. We represent those with two lowercase letters, so the second plant must be big G, little g, little y, little y. From there, we're going to work steps three, four, and five. We're going to put our Punnett square out here. Again, this needs to be a box of 16. We're going to look at plant one. We're going to fill out, figure out all the possible um, gene combinations for the um, um, sperm or egg. So if we can say that here. Um, so we look at plant one. We have a big G and that big G can go right here with that big Y. The big G could also go with the little Y. Now we have to do the same thing for this little G. That little G and that big Y could go together. That little G and that little Y go together. So if you saw how he's moving the arrows, that's how you can figure out what your gene combinations are in your sex cells. Now down the left here, big G can go with a little Y. 
The big G can go with the second little Y. The little G can go with the little y, first little Y or the second little Y. Okay, so you can see there, those are the possible combinations in the gametes for the second plant. Okay, so we have our Punnett square. We have the possible gametes from the two different plants. Now all we have to do in step five here is put those together inside the Punnett square. Again, notice, and don't forget to do this like you did on your, uh, when we were doing the one factor crosses, very important to put these allele combinations on the outside at the top and left of the Punnett square. Now, if we start putting things together, and you can see in that first box, we're going to get a big G, big G, a big Y, and a little Y. We move to the second box at the top. We have two big G's, but now we have two little Y's. <clears throat> we look at the third box at the top. We have a big G and a little G, and we have a big Y and a little Y. And finally, we do the top, last top box, big G, little g, two little y's. Now, very important, it does make it easier when doing the Larry last part to make sure you're putting your letters back together, your g's back together, and your y's back together. Okay, that makes things a lot easier to do. Now, in this particular case, you can see that this gamete carries exactly the same two alleles as this gamete. So if we have two gametes that have exactly the same two alleles and they can com possibly combine with these, we should get exactly the same outcomes. So I know this second row is going to be exactly the same as the top row. Now when we move down to row three, our gamete has changed. It has a little g, little y instead of a big G. So we again take this big G and this little g and put them together. Big y, little y, put them together. And that is our possible genotype in an offspring. Again, we work across big G, little g, but now we have two little y's. And we work across and we realize now we are, are going to be dealing with yellow pods, two small g's, <clears throat> we have a big Y and a little Y, two small G's, two little Y's. Again, we can see that the fourth row, the gamete in the fourth row is the same as the gamete in the third row, so we should get the same combinations. Now, what you will be doing uh, on your worksheet is going th down and listing all the different gamete formations. Now I've actually already done that on your worksheets. All you have to do is look in your Punnett square and write down how many of each there are. Okay, I will have already put those on your worksheet. And once you have those, we'll move into the phenotypes. This is what really we are after. Okay, now again, four possible phenotypes. We can have green pods, yellow peas, that's the two dominant traits. We can have green pods, a dominant trait, with green peas, a recessive trait. We can have yellow pods, that again being a recessive trait, yellow peas being dominant, and then we can have the two recessive traits getting together forming yellow pods with green peas. What you need to go through then is count how many of each of these. This is where you have to look back into the Punnett square, look at the genotype or possible genotypes and figure out what pod color there is in yellow pea. Since green pods and yellow peas are both dominant, we're looking for a big G and a big Y. A big G and a big Y. A big G and a big Y. Any place that we see a big G and a big Y, that's going to have green peas and yellow um, yellow green pods, excuse me, and yellow peas. If you counted, that was six. Now, again, green pods, but this time green peas. So we're looking for big G's for these green pods. But again, the only way to have a green pea is to have two small Y's. So looking for big G 
two small y's. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Big G, two small y's. Big G, two small y's. Big G, two small y's. If you go through and count carefully, you will find these four plus these two have big G, small y's. You have six of those. Now we're dealing with yellow pods. Yellow pods are little G's. We can only have little G's. So we're dealing with these guys here with little G's. Yellow P's are dominant, big W. So we're looking for little G's with a big W. We see that there are two of them. And finally, our two recessive traits, yellow pods, green P's can only have recessive alleles. So we're looking for all lowercase letters. And we see that there are two of those. Now, again, we take these numbers here on the left and simply divide those by 16 because there are 16 boxes. 6 divided by 16 gives us 37.5%. So that is the probability of getting those first two phenotypes. <coughs> we take the 2 out of 16 for the uh, second or the last two phenotypes, and that is 12.5%. To double check yourself, if you add these numbers together, they should add up to 100%. Okay, hopefully when you did this on your own, you got it right. Again, if you're having problems, email me and I'll try to explain some things before you start. If you're feeling comfortable, again, pay attention to the letters that you'll be using. I have put those for you on the worksheet. But work through your worksheet. Make sure you get that submitted to me. Have a great day.